Get great internet, <laughs> I can work. <laughs> so that makes you the put to you put that on your destination list. You got good internet? Okay, we can check that out. You, you know, you're gonna laugh at something before before I started traveling. This is gonna go in a little bit of a different direction. Go ahead, but go ahead. This is okay. I, I said, I said I'll go anywhere as long as I can get clean sheets, hot water, and flushable toilets. Those are my three. Uh oh, uh oh. I know what you're saying. Be glad you did not go up in the provinces of Cebu. You would have hated it. It don't have either one, any of them. No, no. I went for a weekend and I told them people, it was nice meeting you, but I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm just not. But, um, so now you, you, you've actually transitioned to being a digital nomad yourself, right? If I was the. Throughout my HR career, though, we didn't call it um, remote work back then. We called it telecommuting, right? So yeah. wherever you can get internet connection for your laptop, you could work. Mm -hmm. um, but most of my time was travel, and I was travel for work and in the office. But I did also work by telecommuting. But now it is really purely like you said, being a, a digital nomad. Yeah, yeah. Let's transition this into something else. I've been following your Facebook posts and I happen to know that you have a very spiritual touch to your life. Yeah, I saw that you stopped at a religious ceremony. Was that, am I right? Oh, I go to church. Yeah, I go to church. Well, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. It, it was really, what really caught me is that you actually found that during your travels and you make that a part of your lifestyle. And I happen to, I happen to know that um, you mentioned something about some kind of religious education you're going through or something. Well, if you, you don't know, want to talk about it, that's cool. But I really, well, I'm, I'm going to let you know the truth, Jill. My other YouTube channel is called The God Principles. Okay. okay. I think, so, yeah, I so, saw that. Yeah. So, um, I incorporate spiritual principles that I've learned from my personal travel with God or whatever you want to call it. So it's, it's open. It's open. Whatever yeah. you want to discuss about it is up to you. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure you have a testimony. I have a testimony. Mine, however, it came later in life. <laughs> but because of, again, how God has wired me, um, I, I love reading, love studying. So when I gave, uh, when I, when I succumb, succumbed to the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, it was on. <laughs> it was, when I say it was on, it, it's been absolutely amazing, dynamically yes. amazing. There is absolutely no way I can e exempt him from my life. I mean, I see God in everything I do. I consult with him in everything. That, it's just a way of life for me. Now, something that I was not too sure of is, you know, we make assumptions or I made assumptions, okay, this country is Buddhist or this country is Hindu or this country is Muslim. You know, when I go to a country, I just Google Christian churches. Uh -huh. And every place that I have been, <laughs> God is there, Jesus is in the house, Holy Spirit is moving. And um, actually, you know, in Dawis, oh my God, Goodness, oh my goodness! Oh, you know, I've been. I had to go back there several times. <laughs> oh, you know, and you would think, if you had your eyes closed, you would think that you were in a church in the U.S. because even though they speak another language, right? When uh -huh. they sing and worship in the Lord, 
I mean, they, the, the whole, it's one spirit, right? It's one, right. it's the same spirit. So I just love, absolutely love seeing God everywhere I go. Um, now people may think, oh, well, you're in a certain country, so they're, uh, they're not going to allow. And actually, because, you know, um, uh, Vietnam and, and Cambodia, uh, well, communism, right, does not supposedly permit religion, right? And here I am in these countries and I'm like, oh, so a lot of things have been a learning for me, but most importantly, Charles, God is everywhere. And I, for those who have been called to evangelize or minister in certain countries or around the world, you know, it's just awesome. I have what I call what I've been prophesied to actually, that I have an uncommon ministry. And I know that. And I believe it's because of how God wired me. My radio program was liberating truth. And okay. what I okay. do is a lot of times I was interviewing pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles on different subjects. It, it could be business. It could be prophecy. I mean, so anyway, it all works together. Um, even, you know, the author showcase, which is my publishing company was a platform. It still is a platform. God told me this for authors to present their literary work. And when someone spoke that to me, that they, it was a friend said, you know, you need to be a host hosting a book conference. I had never hosted a book conference. And what God did with that and how that came together, it had to, it had to be God because it happened like that. Right. And well, the showcase went from being in, um, the first one was um, in Orlando, then it went to uh, Miami and then Tampa and then Atlanta and then Texas. So, you know, stuff like that, we, I don't take for granted, but I just see him everywhere in every element. So I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> no, Jill, Jill, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Mm -hmm. This was the direction I wanted the interview to go. The other stuff right. is just the, the foundation, but you know, um, I understand that for some reason, God brought us together. And when you look at the, the impossibility of us ever coming across each other's path, you see, it's like, wait a minute, this is bigger than something than just you or I. Amen. And I, that's why I went with it. And I said, I knew it. I knew it. Now what God's going to do with it. Yeah. Um, it gives a lot of people hope that there's a better way of life because that's, that's the one common thing that I'm seeing over here is that the men that come here are coming out of all these different countries. I mean, Denmark, Germany, Australia, Nova Scotia. I mean, it's like being in the UN over here. I mean, yeah. all these languages and stuff, but we all get together and there's no division amongst us whatsoever. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going with the spirit of it. Um, there are a lot of people watching me back all over the world because I do belong to another fellowship. Uh, and our message is that people can find a new way of life. Um, and just to be an example of that for others is really, yeah. really what we're, what we're about here. And, uh, we have 37 minutes in. We got about eight minutes to go. Or what do you, what do you, what else you, what is, what is your plan now? But you, you know, I wanted to share something. You know, I didn't just wake up one day and just randomly say, oh, I'm going to travel. I didn't do that. I had the thought of going to Cappadocia, Turkey, which has the Church of Ephesus, by the way. But um, 
I didn't just pop up. It might, might look to something to an onlooker like, oh, I'm just suddenly going. No, I actually followed some YouTubers um, for like two years. I didn't know how to do what I do, but I participated in um, conference, video conferences, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions. I listened to many, many people. I just didn't know that people lived like this. Um, really? but I had to learn. Yeah. So I got to a point where it was okay. I have to stop just thinking about it and I have to stop just talking about it and I have to be about it. And I okay. tell you, that is what, uh, you know, when I said, okay, my daughter asked me, well, you know, when are you going to, what are you going to do with your car? <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, well, I thought you'd keep it. And she's like, why? And I said, because, you know, I'm going to need it when I get back. And she's like, well, when are you coming back? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, well, why, why would you pay a card note and pay for insurance and not be driving it? And I said, oh, I just thought, I, and she's like, it doesn't make any sense if, you, you know, I, at that point I had a month, one month remaining before I was leaving. And so, um, so I'll, you could borrow my car, sell your car. <laughs> and I sold it and I borrowed her car for a month. And then I was being about it. And actually I wound up the first person when I left out, went to Japan and Thailand. And the person who came with me was my friend, Margaret, who has traveled internationally as long as I've known her. And each year she would ask me and my daughter to join her, her daughter and her mom to an international destination. I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll go. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so busy with work. I can't. But anyway, long story short, we did go, to, we, we went with her to Australia back in 2005 <laughs> and, and Alaska, but she came with me because she wanted to do Japan and Thailand. So for we did Japan for a week and then she came to Thailand and then she had to go back to Atlanta. But so it was a blessing to have her with me because she is a world traveler. Um, but uh, as I was mentioning before, I didn't just pop up and suddenly leave. I, again, based on my wiring, I did the studying, researching and, I was just left with a lot of information and I had to put things in motion. And it turned out to be actually, this is my perspective, Charles, you may feel otherwise, but it turned out to be so much easier than I thought. <laughs> yep. Yep. I could, right. I could share. I just jumped up and left. <laughs> God showed me something. He said, go do this. I came over here and visited for a couple of weeks about a long distance relationship. I loved it so much. I said, I'm out of here. I'm, I went back, sold everything. Jill, I'm going to tell you something. Now, just to show you how God worked, I sold my car back to the dealership and they gave me back more money than what I paid for it. Oh, wow. I, I'm serious. I'm serious. See, when I came over here, I was worried about all that stuff, all that material stuff that I had, that God had provided for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And so we get rid of all this stuff. And it's like, boy, this is real liberating. And then I meet yes. a guy over here now. We, we are uh, addiction recovery coaches, stuff like that. And we noticed that God had brought us here. And he was talking about, mm -hmm. well, Jesus sent them out two by two. And we noticed, well, both of us is here with the same yeah. background. Yeah. Then yeah. he shared this story with me, and it's like it blew my mind. He said, God always has a ram in the bush. Mm. Now, we didn't got here, and I'm in a two-bedroom townhouse for $275 in a subdivision with a pool and security. And if I was in America, I couldn't afford this. I don't oh. drive anymore. I get chauffeur. It's like, wow. When he shared yeah. that aspect of it, it's like, 
God put us here, brought us here. And I'm so yeah. glad what's going on in America right now. I, I'm saying God to move me out the way. I'm grateful for that. And I'm just going to stick with it. That's it. Well, you, you know, uh, something that I noticed because <laughs> so I've been to Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, and now I came back to Vietnam and Cambodia. But what I noticed is things that I had heard about these countries kind of in the news, Charles, it's been more, I, it's definitely like the first six months going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my. The lavish architecture, if you haven't been to Thailand yet, oh my goodness. Yeah, I've heard. Oh my goodness. Every train stop, there's a lavish, not just a mall, extremely lavish mall. In these countries, they have architecture and buildings and museums that are so extensive, far more than I ever thought. I was like, yeah. where? Where have I been? <laughs> I didn't get, I wasn't aware. I'm thinking third world. And there's a certain image that yeah. conjures up in your mind. Right. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And if some things you have to see for yourself to believe it, you yeah. know, because when you, again, when you name certain countries, you know, if you went to school, you know, they talk third world. And I'm like, you know, I, I was like, no joke, Charles. I was like, we're the homeless. I was like, we're the homeless people. Now, just before leaving, I was living in Atlanta and just on the train system alone in MARTA, a significant portion of the homeless population, that's where they are. And, you know, I told you I lived in uh, Sacramento, California for a while. I went back to visit uh, my daughter's babysitter for Thanksgiving last year, year before last. Okay. The homeless population, you've heard probably about 10 Here in these countries, I'm like, where are the homeless? Because it's not what you would think. The other thing I was like, where do they get all this food from? All this fresh fruits, vegetables all the time. Yeah. Where do I get all this from? I, I go on tours now and see. And and I I'm like, everyone works here. <laughs> what, what? Oh, but I'm, and I'm, I'm just going to turn this back over to you. But the one of the most or the highlights for me has been the motorcycles. You know, the okay. motorcycles um, yeah. drive in chaotically, chaotically, right? Because they drive like this. But here's something that's amazing. Driving in Atlanta, um, just about every time you drive, you're gonna see an accident. Now, yeah. in the eight months that I've been traveling, I've yet to see an accident. I'm, oh, I don't want to see one, and I know there are likely accidents, but you would think the way people drive these motorcycles and tuk-tuks and jeepneys, that there would be accidents all day, every day. They drive both directions, even on the sidewalks and into buildings, and it was amazing, but there is a level, Charles, here, and I believe it's probably rooted in their culture and their religion. They give way. They give way to people. They yield. There's this understanding that someone can get ahead of you. They don't have these collisions when I think about how on our, even coming out of the parking lot at Walmart, people are mad <laughs> about and you don't, you don't see that. You, I, I, you don't hear the yelling, the screaming, the road rage. I haven't yet. Maybe your story is different, but it was pretty amazing for me, just in terms of the driving. How long did it take for you to decompress? Because see, I had to, when coming out of America and that, you know, that, that, I 
had to decompress from that environment. I had to learn a new definition for patience. You know, so oh. cause they they really patient over here. It's like wow. Oh yeah, but, yeah. They, they have and, and, but there is a poverty situation here in the Philippines, and the, mm -hmm. but this is an upwardly mobile society in Cebu. There's an IT park that corporation from America hire call centers, all kind of stuff. So this country has a lot of opportunity that people can take advantage of. You know, they just don't know that this is going on. Like you say, we had that, well, it's a third world. That puts a mindset, it's like third, okay, so we first world, we bet, no, they got a whole <laughs> lot better, a whole lot better. I mean, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of things over here. It's like in America, you would not believe that you could do this. Yeah. So I'm real you, grateful you, for this. You want to put in who do you work for and what you can do for people? Because it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be excerpts on LinkedIn. Let me, this. There, there is, you know, I have my own, I have my own HR firm. It's called Plumline Consulting, right? Okay. And that was God directed. It's been in existence for more than 10 years. That, that's a whole other story for another day. But usually just by word of mouth, people will come to me and ask for services. I do full scale HR services, but there is one particular, well, two, but one of the particular uh, programs that I administer, it's a, an assessment called the Campbell's Interest Skills Survey. And what it is, it's a 320 question survey that an individual takes, and then it will tell them what they should pursue, develop, explore, and avoid concerning work, concerning occupations. It is such a dynamic survey. Let me give you a quick example. What? Most people will come to me and say, you know, oh, Jill, can you help me with my resume or, and I'm talking about outside of LHH. Can you help me with my resume or can you help me with my interviewing skills? Can you practice with me? Can you help me, you know, when I'm onboarding, you know, when I'm starting a job, what do I do? So they'll ask me those things and then I share with them the CISS. And, uh, you know, they'll say, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm an accountant or, you know, I, I'm a sociologist. They take the assessment. Now there are four categories, right? Pursue, develop, explore, avoid. Okay. And I'll give all these are real life <laughs> examples. I'm like, okay, you said you want to be a, you want to do accounting. What, what is this about construction work or carpentry? Help me understand that. What is this? You should be working with children. Uh, you should work, be working with animals. Help me understand. We haven't talked anything about these and these are saying pursue. And usually right. I get, oh yeah, I, I love doing that. Yeah, I do that. I do construction work. A woman told me, I do construction work. I build everything around my house. Well, why aren't you pursuing that? Oh, there's no money in that. I, I really can't do that. And then, because this happens time and time again, when they do the assessment, and I say, I'll tell you what, I can help you with your resume and interview techniques and skills, how to onboard. I can, you know, you want me to explain policies to you? I, we can do that. I said, but I want you to go back and I review with them how to digest their report, their CISS reports. I said, give yourself a minimum of two hours. And I step them through how to read it effectively. I say, but what, what's happening is, what's in your heart is being revealed to me and you didn't share it with me, but your heart did. And I would love yeah. to help you. And I can help you with your resume and those other things, but you really should consider these are saying, pursue these items and, you know, explore means, you know, you're good at something, but it's like, you know, it's no big deal. You know, you just naturally go, oh, it's no big deal. I just do it. 
to explore, you might want to explore that because you have a high level of skill, but not the interest. And um, develop is you have the high level of interest, but not the skill. But the, the avoids, a lot of times those are the things that people are doing because they say, oh, there's a lot of money in that. Or everyone in my family is a police officer. I have to be a police officer. Or, you know, th that's a real status job. I want that job. But it's saying avoid it. And I just had a client um, who came out that should be avoiding administrative work. And she should be working with children. And we had a great session. And then she comes back to me like two weeks later and says, you know, I started a job working with children. She said, but my mom asked me to be the admin assistant for her friend because her friend needs an administrative assistant. She said, but I hate that type of work, but I feel obligated to yeah. do it for it because my mom is asking me. So anyway, that's the CISS. The other one is the SSWS strategy and synergy work session, which uh, I'll leave for another time. But uh, I administered That's those programs fabulous. under Plum Line. We, so. well, well, just just to tie it all together, have you ever heard of a Myers-Briggs test? I'm quite sure you have. Yes, I know it well. Uh -huh. Myers-Briggs personality test. Yeah. And there's another yeah. one. We have a brand personality test based on Jungian psychology that we we that I run people through to let them to reveal because you're right there are certain things in our personality we should avoid really really but so you know I do understand that concept um I think we can end it here we had 54 minutes it went a whole lot it was beautiful <laughs> it's going to be several segments um I want to thank you I invited you in my living room because, you know, it's like, this is my studio because I'm moving around. I do a lot of work outside too. So I'm always packing stuff up and bringing it back. So anyway, I want to thank you. Don't hang up because on your screen, you should see a box up there says uploading. We got to stay on until that finish. I'll cut that out, but I'm going to stop the recording right now. Okay. Okay.